So here we are back with episode 16 of G-Witch. Episode 15 has been my favorite so far with the series, as it was a good change of pace, having a bigger focus on side characters in a setting we haven't seen all that much of, being Earth. Overall, the new season has been fantastic. So without further ado, let's get into episode 16. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. This episode is called Cycle of Sin, and it starts with Prospera and Belmeria's conversation about Aerie from episode 14, and actually expands on it. Prospera explains that Aerie's biometric code had been synced with the data storm that happened during the prologue episode. Since Aerie's body couldn't endure space, she had to use the data storm network to transfer her biometric code into Ariel. However, her original body is now permit particles held inside of Ariel to keep her intact, lest she disintegrates physically. Ariel's permit score is up to 8, which is far more than we've seen other gun format pilots handle. Prospera wishes to expand the data storm range with the Quiet Zero project, so Aerie can live in freedom, which may mean making it at least a global thing. She then asked Belmeria if she would help with Quiet Zero, saying wasn't she the one that made enhanced humans, implying that she had a hand in making the Elans. She goes on about using an artificial central nervous system with resistance to the data storm, what's called the Neural Expansion Theory. Dr. Cardo, a researcher for the Vanitas Institute and lead researcher for the gun format, had refused this theory. Essentially, Prospera is guilt-tripping Belmeria after she had refused to help her, and is apparently distraught over her involvement in making enhanced humans. Prospera ends their conversation, saying that she won't be able to escape either, referring to the research she had been involved with, just like Prospera with Ariel. We then get the opening. After the opening, we get a news broadcast about the attack at the school. It goes over 12 confirmed deaths, many other injured, and the kidnapping of Sarius Zanelli. The Donna Fold claimed responsibility for this attack, and are now said to be involved with the Plant Quetta attack, which we the viewers already knew. In addition, they reported Vim Jaturk dead to everyone in this broadcast, along with Delling Rembrandt being injured. The next part of this broadcast expands more on the last episode's Benerit Group security operations, where they have been quelling anti-Spatian protests that have been turning into riots. The anti-Spatian sentiment on Earth has been growing with the Earthian unrest across the planet, risking a full-on war to break out. The Benerit Group executives are also watching this broadcast, commenting on their confidential matters being leaked. One of them asks where Sarius is, funnily enough, to Shadik himself. He denies any information other than a video message Sarius sent, and that the front management company is still searching for him. Also, Lauda is still alive and present during this meeting, though a bit beat up. He asks what Cathedra is doing about this, as they haven't been able to catch the Donafold after two attacks. The executives go on about their hardline policies backfiring, with the Space Assembly League digging around the matters too. The rest of them believe they'll have to elect a new president for the company. We then cut to the Grassley House, with Hanau asking Shadik if he'll run in the election to become the new president. Shadik says he won't want to miss this chance. However, Arisha mentions Miorin taking over after Delling. Maisie responds with blood alone not being enough to put you at the top. Shadik continues that if she had backing from one of the three branches, she could have a chance, I'm assuming, as he got cut off before he could finish. Shadik says he won't try to be her partner anymore, and that he's going to the head office. Next we get a scene with Miorin asking Lauda if Gundarm Inc. has been cleared of suspicion. He says they haven't found any evidence of their involvement, and that's it. He then mentions Benerit Group looking for a new president, and that she should be happy that she won't be a trophy in the dueling games anymore. Cutting back to the school, we see some repairs being done, and that they're under a state of emergency, with many mobile suits on guard and these cute little Haro-controlled drones. Look at them, they're so cute. With school emergency regulations going on, students have activity restrictions. We get scenes of students lamenting the restrictions, generally wondering what they're going to be doing next. Finally, we get back to seeing how Earth House is doing. Choo Choo is her usual upset self, asking how long they're going to keep Nika in custody with Saleta holding her back. Apparently Earth House got suspended, with an ongoing investigation since they are suspected of being involved with the attack. You know, because Earth House. They even took Ariel and Choo Choo's Demi Trainer. Martin says Saleta is dealing with it fine, and that they only have two more days until the suspension gets lifted. They then get interrupted by some jerk spray painting the side of their building. Some of the other students believe them to be terrorists, and that they're the ones that brought the Gundams. Martin says they had no idea about Sophie and Noria, and asked them to stop their harassment. One of the other students claimed he is just defending the witches of the Gundams, saying their company told them that witches who made the Gundams take pilots' lives with their experiments. Suleta responds that Ariel isn't like that, but he goes on that she took lives in the Rumble Ring. Apparently, this is the group of one of the students that got killed in the Rumble Ring. You know, this guy. His name was Jubiju, I guess. He's, uh... Not very important, to be honest. Anyway, the group blames Earth House for this, and want Jubiju back, calling them murderers while throwing a spray can at them. Martin takes the hit, with Choo Choo ready to throw down. Before a fight breaks out, Miorin shows up having snapped a picture of the can throw, saying the school won't ignore direct evidence of assault. 
We then cut to Nika getting treated for her injuries by Sabina of Grassley House. Nika thanks her, and Sabina asks if she would join their group. She mentions her skills as a mechanic and her behavior at the school, and if she's with Grassley, she could continue studying somewhere else. She even talks about achieving bridging Earth and space with them. Nika says she made a decision and won't act like a victim anymore. That even if the ends are just, she doesn't want to use the wrong means to achieve it. Sabina asks even if it's for Earth, with Nika asking if she's also an Earthian. Sabina says she was until Grassley took her in. She continues with ideals alone not being able to change reality, and that Nika can't leave either. She believes that Shadik and herself will make their dream of bridging Earth and space a reality. Cutting to Elin, we get Pale House discussing him getting Ariel. With the presidential election happening, the dueling games are over, so no more winning over Saleta. Elon was apparently a bit too lax with his fighting at the Rumble Ring, and left the executives pretty disappointed. Elon responds that he was only observing the situation. They go on to say that Ariel has been confiscated because of the incident, and that if this Elon wants to live, he needs to carry out his mission at all costs. Back to Shadik, we learn that the company, being Benarit Group as a whole, splitting into six factions gunning for the presidency, and that they're in sixth place. And then this mysterious hooded figure appears and, I'm kidding, it's just Ghoul. He says he feels like he'd been gone for ages before the half episode eye catch plays. Ghoul made his way to Lauda and Petra, with them actually pretty shocked to see him. He asks how they've been, with Lauda getting pretty emotional and seeing his older brother again. It's a nice moment, until he passes out, which is hilarious. They take him to the infirmary, and Petra tells Ghoul what happened since he disappeared. Lauda had to take over the company all on his own, getting pressed to give explanations and take responsibility for everything. She then mentions his father, but Gyul has already come to terms with that, though Lauda didn't get time to grieve. Gyul then leaves, telling Petra to continue looking after Lauda, and that he'll handle the rest. Before he takes off, she welcomes him back. We then go into a conversation between Miorin and Feng Jun from the Space Assembly League. They say they didn't find any record of the front management company's involvement with the incident, and that Nika was taken by another party disguised as front management employees, which we know as Grassley House. Miorin asks to confirm a departure list, which they agreed to, However, they want a pass to freely enter and exit Gundarm Inc. Miorin asks if they're going to investigate their company too, but apparently they're just curious about the Shinsei Development Corps they acquired, which is the permit mining and mobile suit manufacturer led by Prospera. Miorin agrees as long as they inform her of what they find. After finishing their talk, Feng mentions that the cost of their Gundam repair was excessive, with a lot of assets sent to plant Quetta. She asks if that's appropriate for a bottom-ranked company, referring to Gundarm Inc. Gustan wonders if it's better a group that's behind it. Feng says that even if it requires groundless accusations, that the higher-ups plan to forcibly intervene in Benerit group. I'm assuming referring to the Space Assembly League. Feng wants to prevent unnecessary fuss as their roles as mediators. Getting back to Earth House, Miorin tells the group that Nika isn't with the front management company, and that the Space Assembly League is looking into it for them. She tells everyone they need to wait, with Choo Choo being pretty level-headed about it and agreeing. She says they couldn't find anything about it on their own, and thanks Miorin for getting another group involved. We get a wholesome scene of everyone happy that Miorin is back, and then dump a bunch of work on her to do. While the company can't do any business at the moment, they're still accruing maintenance costs and other things. Suleta also wants Miorin to check out the greenhouse, so Lilik organizes the stuff for Miorin to check, and begins heading out to the greenhouse with Suleta before Prospera shows up. No one other than Miorin in the Earth House knows who she is, and are shocked to learn that she is Saleta's mother. Saleta asks what she's doing there, and she says they are done investigating her, and that she hasn't seen Saleta since the incident. Saleta offers to show her around, but says she can get around by herself. Prospera says she should look after her bride. Miorin seems a bit bothered by this, and takes Saleta to the greenhouse. Prospera introduces herself to the Earth House before cutting to Elin hijacking the aerial. Or should I say, attempting to hijack it, mentioning that Elin 4 was able to pilot it. Ari immediately deploys a data storm and tells Elon to stay away, and then he can't be there. Also, a bunch of Ares appear, laughing and flying around, which is, uh, many questions. There are 12 of them shown, which may be an important detail later, so keep this in mind. Ari pokes at Elon's helmet, which probably nearly kills him before he bails out of the aerial. He questions what the aerial is, noting that it isn't like the Gundam Fair Act at all. Belmeria shows up telling Elon that he can't handle that Gundam. Elon says that it's an order from above and that she should help take it but she can't. He rebuttals saying it's probably easier tinkering with Gundams rather than enhanced humans. She asks what she should have done instead, lamenting her colleagues and research going up in flames from the Vanitas incident, and that she had to take refuge on Pale's payroll. She freaks out saying Gunn's ideals would lead to a better future before getting smacked by Elin. He asks if this future would be better for a human experiment like him, saying that she doesn't want to die, but doesn't care about his future either. She says he's wrong, but he isn't buying it. He says he'll report her to the higher-ups and leaves. 
We then cut to the greenhouse. Mirin and Saleta haven't seen much of each other for a while at this point, so Saleta gives her a rundown on what's been happening. She asks Mirin if she's mad about what happened at the plant, with Mirin responding that she should be mad at her instead. That Saleta saved hers and her father's life, but says some terrible things to her anyway. That she should have thanked Saleta instead. Saleta is happy about this, saying her mother told her that she did the right thing. Still, Mirin is upset that she killed a person and can't be smiling about that. Mirin starts going off, asking if Saleta would do anything her mom tells her. For the most part, Saleta says she would. This upsets Mirin more, saying that Gundarm Inc. isn't a tool of war, and that they would build Gundams that could save lives through medicine. She asks Saleta if she would kill people with a Gundam if her mother told her to. Saleta seemed troubled by this question, but says she would do it. Because of her mother, she got into school, made friends, and got to meet Mirin. So she believes her mother is always right. This upsets Mirin further and she runs off. We then cut to Prospera looking out at Ariel in the hangar, when Mirin confronts her, yelling about Saleta doing anything for her, and that she won't let her have her way with Saleta anymore. Prospera then asks if Mirin would have her way with her instead, just like her father with her. She says her father has nothing to do with this, but Prospera responds saying that her father is the target of her family's vengeance, which we've pretty much known since the beginning of the series. This trips Mirin up, and Prospera mentions Rahan keeping his mouth shut about it, which implies he really knew what was going on. Prospera goes on about the Vanadis incident 21 years prior, blaming Delling for taking her husband and colleagues from her, killing everyone at the Institute in the name of witch hunting. Prospera said only herself and Ariel survived. She says Mirin accused Saleta of being a murderer, but she is no different. Prospera goes on about her comrades asking to be avenged, to kill Delling, which at this point may be the ramblings of an insane woman. Mirin says if they want revenge, that the adults should just kill each other, and to leave Saleta and them out of it. Prospera asks her to cooperate, saying that them getting a new president will ruin the Quiet Zero plan, and that Mirin has to become the next president. Mirin says she couldn't, but Prospera guilt trips her, saying that she has to because she's Delling's bloodstained daughter. And this is where the episode ends. So as usual in these videos, let's recap the major plot points. First off, we get more details about Aerie and the Aerial Gundam. Aerie's physical body is permit particles inside of Aerial, with her biometric code being synced to it. This was, as far as we know, unavoidable to save Aerie's life. She also has access to a permit score of 8, which is much higher than any of the other Gundam pilots we've seen, only going up to about 3 before potentially dying. This is all just with Aerie, so Leta is not affected by the data storms at all. So Ariel is essentially a two-pilot Gundam. Next we have the ongoing tension between Earth and space. Lots of protests and riots are breaking out on Earth, with Benerit's security operations pretty much quelling them with violence. Dawn of Fold claimed responsibility for both attacks, so they're willing to fight it out for the most part. I expect this all to come to a head soon. The new presidency race has a lot of the Benerit group factions wanting to take it. The major players pretty much being Shadik and Miorin. Shadik has already used a lot of force and underhanded tactics so far, so most of the other factions should be dealt with pretty handily with the exception of Miorin. I suspect some combat coming from this very soon. Then we have Elin trying to take the aerial. Elin 4 was able to pilot it without issue, but I think Aerie senses what the pilot's intentions are when trying to control aerial, and that's why Elin 5 was kicked out. I believe anyone who is partial to Saleta's cause is allowed access. There's also the 12 Ares that appeared. I'm not sure of the significance of this, and may be an important number later on. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. Lastly, I want to talk about Mirin, Saleta, and Prospera. We learn that Saleta would truly do anything her mother asks of her, which is why Prospera has had such an easy time manipulating her thus far. I think Mirin getting upset about this may make Saleta question if her mother has been right about everything, and may change in the near future. Right now though, Saleta doesn't have any idea about Quiet Zero and probably the Vanadis incident, so her learning of that will be a big revelation for Saleta's character. Prospera telling Mirin about the Vanadis incident and that her father was the one that slaughtered many people was a big reveal to her. Rahan knew about this, but instead of telling her, said that she should just follow what she wants instead. Prospera needs Mirin to become the next president of Benerit, so she'll do whatever she needs to in order to make that happen. Even terrible guilt-tripping manipulation, the thing she's really good at doing. All in all, a lot happened this episode. Probably more plot revelations than even episode 14. It was mainly an exposition dump episode, but that contrasts the last episode nicely where we got a lot of combat. Lots of things were cleared up, and everyone is together again after the incidents of the last few episodes. Can't wait to see where we go from here, now that there's a lot of internal conflict the characters are going through. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this discussion, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.